And good evening, everyone. Richard Copperthwaite here, a.k.a. Duke Forrest. Thanks for joining us for another edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. And happy to have, I guess, for the first time on the set, Mr. Cam Wood. And thanks to Mr. Dave Handy for recruiting Cam. And it sounds like we could be here for many hours talking all sports if that was uh, if we were so inclined, Dave. Huh? Well, I got a phone call today from Uncle Snake, and he wanted to inform <laughs> me to leave room for Cam to have something to say. So he was, he'll, 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 we'll give him plenty, plenty of time. Well, I uh, I told him I said it's not like Nighthawks here. Richard's usually pretty, pretty quiet. <laughs> Uh, you guys, hey, I'll, I'm happy to just sit here and read read my papers and stuff. So, so Cam, just a little little background for yep. uh, probably everybody out there knows you yep, absolutely well. But give us a little background, and there's certainly some sports in there too. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, born and raised in a sports family. Uh, grew up in the area. Been here the majority of my life. Uh, your grim grandfather Lynn Wood. Grandfather Lynn know, Wood. Uh, George S. Woods. A lot of people think right. he's George, but it's Lynn. Uh, we get that a lot. Where did, where, did, where did the George come from? Was that another? That's, that's my great grandfather. Okay. A lot of people don't know he passed away in the late '70s, oh, really? and they just George the S. Woods. They tie that with my grandfather. Okay. Uh, the original store was on Main Street, right next to the movie yep. theater. They used to do it outside, oh, right? next to the movie theater. That's right. Yeah. Drive oh, up really? service. Wow. Um, so uh, yeah, I grew up in St. Albans. Um, spent a little time out of state, a couple years, but went to BFA. Um, and then went to Castleton State College down in Castleton. Now Castleton University. Of Castleton course. University now as a varsity athlete there. Played on the golf really? team. No Great problem. program. Um, you know, played hockey and golf for BFA. And, uh, you know, now working for my uncle down at George S. Woods. And, huh. uh, you know, big fan of the Catamounts, men's basketball, hockey. And then obviously Bob White's, you know, our local uh, yeah. high school program and whatnot. You had Patrick Jim perchance. I on was Monday down. Night? Yep, oh, I right. actually right. Uh, had the privilege with going with a couple alumni wow. uh, who invited me down, um, and uh, it was a great game. Blew out Sienna. I think yeah. they threw up 80. Uh, cats can shoot the rock. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, a uh, very good team from the perimeter for sure. So that was a good experience to have, and uh, they had a great crowd. So. Do you know Coach Brennan? Have you? I, I, you didn't do any broadcasting I, of UVM games. I don't, but I've always looked up to him. Yeah. Uh, you know that when they had against Syracuse in '05, yeah. that was just probably one of the big, biggest wins sure. that that uh, that college has had. And and after that, he got recruited to ESPN, and he just all around seems like a great guy. Look, like I thought he did a nice job on ESPN. Those guys are funny. You never know who sticks with those guys. He was on maybe a couple a couple of years yeah, with those guys. It's, yeah. it's a tough gig. Yeah. Uh, and of course, ESPN's really in a toilet right now. They, I read they, they were, could they could maybe use Coach Coach Brennan right now. They're they're going to let another hundred or two hundred go. Really? Oh, really? Is that right? I didn't know that. Because they're, um, huh. well, we talked about this before, but what's happened is a lot of um, they're they're losing subscribers. Yep. Hand over fist. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they're losing viewers. A lot of viewers. people just get yeah. away from cable and stuff and go on to... Well, everybody does stuff on their phone. Right. And then the other thing is is that they've lost a lot of the traditional uh, sports center guys like me. Yep. That used to watch it. And, yeah. I used to watch Sports Center every morning. I almost never, never watch it these days. And I think basketball. part of it is, too, they've become quite politicized yeah at the time it's on sports about that yeah. and uh, you know that thing. whole business with uh Bruce Viola. Jenner and uh yeah. and then making uh you know Colin Kaepernick athlete of the year or whatever that is that's such crap yeah I mean so anyway uh huh. they're really uh they're really uh they're on the struggling. downfall you're right you 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 wake up every morning and, you know, uh, you guys obviously were more exposed to it when it was strictly sports. But I remember a little bit as a kid, you wake <laughs> up and it's all drama. It, yeah. It's it's almost like a reality TV show. And yeah. no one cares about, you know, the big play or this player doing X, Y, and Z. It's yeah. all about what they're doing personally and, and using the sport really to uh, publicize their, their beliefs. I think and that really comes, like I said, I almost never watch Sports Center. I, I, I appreciate can't remember the last college time I basketball. It. Yeah. But that really that really comes up a lot, right. huh? And I think the other thing huh. is too uh, they've uh, you know I I blame them for the demise of good sportsmanship because they were the first guys huh. to focus on the guy patting his chest after he makes a play. Yeah, uh, all right. The uh, the whole business with the big money and and the NCAA. Mm -hmm. 
is really fueled by them. Because huh. don't they have the SEC or or somebody? ESPN? It, it, yeah. Yes. A SEC, SEC and ACC is networked somehow or connected. Because yeah, you go on like the ESPN app, like right now, I could pull up an ACC basketball game. Of course, I'm a, you may or may not know. You probably don't know. I'm a dookie, so feel free. How about that loss to Boston College? Hey, good, Are we going to get into that later no. or no? <laughs> oh, sure. Hey, I, I didn't see the game. I was otherwise occupied and I yeah. never tape anything. Yeah. Kudos to the Eagles. And no, it's great. That's Coach K. Coach K tends to be pretty straight. He said, hey, hey the better team beat us tonight. Yeah. BC shot out of their minds that yeah. game. And, and just a comment on that without going too far in depth, that Eagles program's really yeah. struggled the past 10 years. Yeah. Before sure. that, they were like an 8-9 seed maybe about 10 years yeah, ago. they're decent. But decent they're, they're shooting the rock well. Yeah. Um, they played not so good Columbia uh, team the other night. But again, another, beat them another good shooting performance. And, and I think come tournament time, uh, they, they will be a bubble team getting in again. Yeah, so that's, great. that's good to see. Coach Jim, Jim Christen. Yeah, the Dukies, for the record, never should have been undefeated. They pulled uh, about three games. They had been behind by double digits. Four or like five of those wins against Hunter, some of those in that, teams. In that tournament, the, what, the Phil Knight 80. Oh, my tourney. God. Some great comebacks, but uh, yeah, they're a young team. They're a very talented team, but well, you know, I wasn't unhappy. I with came that loss. tonight to talk about Giancarlo. I was, Stan I was gonna, well, I was gonna oh, say, geez. isn't that still that's that's still probably your top story out there? Wow, and of course, Red Sox, some of the Red Sox beat writers are getting into that a bit, saying, well, maybe the Red Sox should have given this a little, a little more effort. Remember what I said last week? I think I cited Buster Olney. I think I mentioned that he on the show last the week. I heard him in a Wednesday interview a week ago on the, uh, on the radio show out of uh, Burlington here. Those guys do a good job. They get him every Wednesday. But he said, hey, Giancarlo Stanton, yeah, the talk's mostly cards, giants, but keep the Yanks in mind. The Yanks just might be a player here, and presto, they grab him. Well, uh, are, there any, are there any down, downsides to this, Dave? Uh, I'll tell you who's really getting uh, vilified is Jeter. Jeter. Yeah. Jeter's from, taking from non, a licking. From, from non-Yankee fans, I guess. Well, no. Uh, well, of course, the Red Sox course, fans Marlins, all think that yeah. they gave them uh, right. Stanton Home for free. Uh, I mean, Just I'll, I'll add my insight after you. Yeah, I'll let him go off. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. That it, Here's the whole thing in a nutshell. Yeah. Jeter, I bet I've read a lot of this in the last... Uh, because I knew I was going to have to have be prepared with Let camera me just ask here. You, you're a fan. Who's your are you a, socks? So you're socks. A, hey, Generally so, um, speaking, uh, my major sports. I'm pretty local throughout New England. Yeah. Uh, I got a couple yeah, uh, guy. couple oddball teams, but in this sense, I am a Red Sox fan. Right. So hey, I grew up about 15 miles out of Fenway. So anyway, how this all came down? Okay. Is Jeter had when Jeter or and or his group had their first meeting with Stanton. Yeah. Stanton says, "Hey." We got a pretty good team. You get us a couple of pitchers, and we're going to have some. And uh, they weren't go they aren't going that this way. Is Stanton talking to G yeah. Jeter? Yeah. Stanton said, "Hey, you look at they had an all all three of their outfielders were all stars, I wow. think, because Stanton and then the guy they traded today, uh, Ozuno, huh. traded him to the Cardinals. He's huh. a big, he's a number four hitter." Really? So anyways, Boy, these guys are just they had the D team. Gordon. They right. so anyway, they go, well, you know, thanks for your advice, but I don't think we're going to go that way. Um. And so then they uh, started. They had much better deals with Cardinals and the Giants. Their intent was clearly to trade Stanton for, for sure. They they've the Marlins, I guess, have lost four hundred million dollars. Really, the last ten years or whatever it is, and huh. they they can't afford the payroll they've got. Okay. So, anyway, to finish, oh, we got a caller. Well, we'll we'll see. Keep talking. Keep talking. So anyway, to to finish my long story, he said, "No, I'm not going to the Cardinals. I'm huh. not going to the Giants." He gave them a list of four teams. And the uh, Astros didn't want them, huh. and the Dodgers couldn't do it, so there was only one team left. Really? And basically, the Yankees gave them some fourth tier prospect, and just took the money. And also, one good. I mean, Starlin Castro, one solid player. Starlin Castro's good, but what the, the Marlins may flip him. The Marlins are going to so flip. He'll probably him. be gone. And uh, so, anyway, it's uh, huh. it's really come down hard on Jeter, but. Yep. 
So I, this was Stanton saying he didn't want to go, say, to the cards with Giants? Or he would not go because he, he wanted no the Yanks. He made it known. He, he there wanted were four the teams Yanks. he'd go to. We'll, we'll come back to this. Go ahead, caller. Jump into the fray if you like. You're on the best damn sports show in Franklin County. Cam Wood, it's great to see you on TV keep finally, on, try kid. Try to keep looking ahead, Cam. The voice is behind us. Yeah, sorry. It was it. Yeah, um, we got a special guest tonight, Mr. Yep. Cam Wood. I know. The whole city is really proud of him for getting on TV. I have a question for I Cam. So. I'm sorry to switch topics. Okay. Cam Wood, Baker Mayfield, Heisman Trophy winner. What's Lee Holtz going to, or what's Lou Holtz going to say about that, kid? Uh, <laughs> Chad, first of all, great to hear from you. You know, you, you know, I love talking sports with you, so uh, glad you can be my first caller. But, um, you know, I think Lou Boy, when it comes down to it, he's going to say put away all these awards to the side. It's about one thing. It's about winning that national championship. I think with the matchups and the setup, who they got, I like their chances. Their offense is explosive. And you know what? The kid's had some flaws this year, but he plays with passion. And as a viewer and a sports fan, that's what we like to see. I don't see any of those other three quarterbacks in the biggest position when it comes down to it, being able to do that on this tier. I thought the committee got it great. I'm excited. How's, your, how's think, Oklahoma's defense? How's your defense? You know, that, that's, that's a sensitive subject for yeah. sure. Um, as a Big 12 fan, I get a lot of crap for that. And um, you're, you're a Big 12 guy. Yeah, huh? Oklahoma Sooners. I got that from wow. my dad. But, um, you know, the one thing I'd like to say is, uh, you know, TCU, another great offense. They held them to 17 or so. They go up to uh, the horseshoe and play Ohio State. Hold them to 17. Okay. Uh, I think it's going to take a team to put up 30 plus points against Oklahoma. I see that being tough to do. Maybe a Clemson, but uh, at the end of the day, I, I think Baker gets it done. And, uh, you know, Lou saying, stay within yourself and uh, let's get it done. And, and I think he will, Chad. It was certainly a no brainer for the, for the Heisman. Oh, uh, what did God. he get? Almost 90% of the. Uh... Yeah, I mean, he had Jackson last year who put up great numbers, but Jackson didn't have the Robbie Andersons and the Hollywood Browns and, uh, of course, their tight end, won the tight end award. They don't have those explosive players, and uh, Oklahoma's got that, and, uh, you know, that definitely helped the situation. What do you think, Cole? You can you convinced about the Sooners? No, I guess, I guess uh, Chad, I guess Caller's not with us. Hey, appreciate the calls. I'd uh, love to get a bunch of calls. 527-6449 is our number. Back I, to Mr. Stanton. Oh, I got just one little aside. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, Mr. Wood, when you were at the garage, I think it might have been uh, paying your rent. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was before the Georgia, uh, not the, the Georgia, Georgia Auburn. Auburn game. Yeah, we talked about and that. And we talked about that. And I did I or did I not say that it was going to be really hard for Auburn to beat Georgia twice. Dave called it. I didn't see it coming personally because Auburn looked great coming into that. Well, they did. But. He did say that to me. I will give him credit. And we've got, okay, we're back to the calls. Go ahead, caller. Well, I want, from this point on, uh, your, your, your guest host, is, to me, is going to be known as the Cam Man. <laughs> and there's no better name for a television personality than the Cam we'll, man. We'll so that. You're known to me. I don't care if you're on the golf course or on the street or selling tires. From this point on, you're known as the Cam man. <laughs> Very good. Love uh, yeah, it, that's a perfect name. That. Love it, Leonard. Appreciate it. I, I, I like that. Uh, Baker Mayfield. I, I, I think Oklahoma could win it. He's a great talent. Uh, he's a little too short for the NFL to be great. Um, I can't imagine the Giants drafting him. Can you imagine the Giants with Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham on the same team? No. I mean, you'd have no. to have a shrink full time like dealing Baker with these two head cases. Huh? I mean, uh, no, if the Giants pick a quarterback, it's going to be the kid from UCLA or uh, USC. They're no. not going to put up with that head case from Oklahoma. No. I'm sorry. Uh, but that's my, my thought on that. But I don't even want to talk about sports. I changed over from. Netflix to uh, to uh, Amazon, and uh, I just watched. Uh, maybe I know David and uh, Richard are g great historians, and I just got done watching uh, an HBO thing on John Adams. Anybody seen that? I haven't seen it. Don't get HBO. Some of it. Paul Giamatti is John Adams and Laura yes, Linney is I, I, uh... Abigail. I mean, just good theater. 
It was I mean, good. very well done. Very well done. And uh, just some things that I, I took from it was, uh, I mean, what a, what a time to live and uh, just how courageous these men were compared to our politicians of today. And um, uh, one quote that wasn't even on the program, I had to go research this a little bit, and one of uh, John Adams' best quotes is that uh, one useless man is a shame. Two is a law firm. <laughs> and three or more is a Congress. <laughs> you gotta love that. I mean, you know, you just gotta you just you just gotta love that. And of course another little uh, tidbit here, uh terror is always in the news and most recently obviously in New York City. Good thing that was a failed attempt, but uh, Max Bowen, who died in nineteen seventy, a Nobel Prize winner from Germany, uh Quantum mechanics it was his big deal. He was a physicist, and, uh, you know, like Einstein, he and his family, uh, you know, fled Nazi Germany, and, um, you know, they know a little something about terror. And I could, I could, there's not enough wine on earth for me to digest, to fully uh, comprehend and discuss one of uh, Max Born's. Uh, uh, little uh, dissertations here. He says that terror is being caused by belief in complete truths in absolute certainty. As I said, there's just not enough wine for me to discuss that. Well, that's I mean, deep. That, 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 you know, and he goes on to say that it's, it's flexibility of thought that has allowed science to develop to the point that it has down through the course of history. And, you know, I, uh, as I said, there's not enough wine for me to really discuss that. Any, Len, any sports you want to talk about? Oh, I just wanted to get, I know David loves this kind of stuff. Well, I, just, uh, uh, I, I want to get his retort on that. Leonard, it just so happens I'm reading a book right now on John Quincy Adams. Oh, yes. <laughs> who, uh, of course, is John Adams' son. And the title of the book is The Last Founding Father. Oh, yeah. And when John Quincy Adams was 14, he went to Europe with his father, who, and because he could speak French, and French was the language of the diplomats back then, he went with his dad to Russia, because uh, they, uh, they were uh, trying to uh, get Russia to uh, uh, recognize the United States, and of course, John Adams was over in Europe and France and all that, and I'm not going to bore everybody with all the details, but a couple of other interesting things with uh, John Adams. Both he and Thomas Jefferson, who were great friends for a long time, and then they had a big falling out, both died on the same day. Mm -hmm. It was 4th so of July, July 4, 1824, right? I yeah, believe. 50 years to the date of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, yes. That's interesting. I have something in common with both of them. Uh, I married my third cousin. They both <laughs> married their third cousin. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, and uh, uh, John Adams, uh, it was during his presidency that the Alien and Sedition Act was passed. And uh, three-quarters of it was done away, ultimately, but one-quarter of it remains a law today. It was, it was used in World War I. It was used in World War II by Delano Roosevelt, to inter the Japanese, and it's still on the books today. Really? Yeah. I didn't and, that, know. and that's a law that was first fostered in the John Adams' administration, the Alien and Sedition Act. And as I said, three quarters of it was uh, quite quickly uh, abandoned, but uh, one quarter of it was not, and uh, and that dealt with uh, you know people who were seditious to this country, and uh, still on the books, still on the books, and. Uh, so, anyway, uh, sports, I don't have much to talk about. I mean, well, know, I'm a Giants uh, fan. What can you talk about? We're hey, just waiting uh, for the draft. I watched my first game. I watched my first game uh, this week. I watched I watched them play the Cowboys. Heard, that's the first game of the season? Yeah. And, uh, really? 
I'll tell you what. Probably a mistake, huh? No, it, the score, it was, a DT it was 10 to 10 with, game, until huh? 4 minutes and 40 seconds yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah, 75% of it was a decent ball game. Yeah, like Cowboys almost game. lost one, lost their season there. I thought they were going to. Uh, but the uh, Eli, Eli played okay. The Giants just don't have any receivers. They don't have much for running game. Their defense is bad. I don't know. They're really a mess. Yeah, they are. It's going to take a while for him to. But I, I, I do uh, think strongly that they'll use that number two or three pick. I think it'll be number two. I can't see him winning another game. Uh, and uh, I, I think they'll take the quarterback from uh, UCLA or, or USC. Yeah. I don't think they'll touch Mayfield. Mayfield is too caustic. He, he, he's just gasoline and fire. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's talented, but he's short, too. Yeah. That's what, physically, as far as his physical stature goes, he's pretty short. How, how short? And that, and that doesn't five, ten, bode well yeah. in the NFL. Yeah, no, it, Leonard, you're absolutely right. He's Johnny Manziel all over again. Wow. Maybe a little bit of the same head case. Probably doesn't have the same drug issue. I don't really know. We won't get I hope into he's that. smarter than Manziel. He's really but another you're right. Manziel. I don't, even though how big of a fan is, I agree with you. He's not going to be a pocket passer. His only way to survive in the NFL is getting outside. He's not big enough to do that. Um, even though I would love to see a uh, uh, Baker Mayfield, Sterling Shepard hookup again. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think as bad as it is for Giants fans. Uh, going in, they thought they were going to be a potential playoff team. They thought they were a Super Bowl team. They've had terrible injuries. Oh, God. Uh, no they've quite. got no running game. Um, I disagree with you respectfully. Uh, you know how much I respect you, by the way. Um, <laughs> I think they need to get the running back from Penn State. I think you try to ride out Eli a little bit. You get that receiving core healthy. you got the solid tight end. Um, and there are a couple defensive players from being right back in the action. See what well, I Well, as I've made it clear on Facebook this week and last week, uh, had it not been for one miracle catch by David Tyree, Thank Eli you. Manning me. is not mentioned in the same breath with the Hall of Fame. I'm sorry. He's no, a Hall of I, Famer. He's a Hall. He's a short. Not, e- not even. Not Leonard, even. Close. He's a first. Ballot. He's an average quarterback. I watched. I watched the Sunday night game, the Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens, right wow. to the conclusion. That was a good game. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I, you know, Roethlisberger, we're talking the same class here of drafts. And, uh, I mean, Roethlisberger is twice the quarterback that Eli Manning is in his physical attributes. I mean, he can run for a first down. His arm is stronger uh, Eli, his biggest attribute is nothing seems to bother him. Water just rolls off his back. You know, he, he can handle adversity. But I'm serious. If David Tyree doesn't trap that ball against his helmet in the Super Bowl, you're not talking Hall of Fame and Eli Manning. He's an average quarterback, in my estimation. No. And he no. always has been. No. I think you're a little. I'm no Giants fan. No. I think you're a no. little hard no. hard on him, Len. Leonard, well, I'm sorry. Leonard I don't know been, what, I, right. I, I, I don't. I don't really know. I mean, he's taken two, uh, you know, two teams that weren't really that good that caught fire at the end and won the Super Bowl with, with some luck. Well, that's that's pretty good accomplishment. Hey. I'd say. Well, Leonard. I mean, does that put you in the Hall of? We go back. I wish the Nighthawk was here because this goes back to guess who? This goes back to Clayton Kershaw. But what about what this goes back to that argument. But what I about, mean, he's got stats, so I, sh- I wish I had him. I've got a couple of stats isn't for you. Top, you know why he's had this? You know why he's had this on this consecutive streak of starts? Because he hasn't put himself in harm's way. Oh. He won't run for a first down. How many? That's I mean, Brady in a season, a I can count maybe on every season that I, he's been in the NFL. I can count on one hand where he's tried to run for a first down. So that's one reason why he's got the consecutive streak. Well, I'm sorry. I think the facts speak for themselves. I think Leonard, you're being a little. You're not being a little. You're being a lot. Well, I, 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 you know, I'm just, that, that's my sincere feelings on Eli Manning. Well, He's an average quarterback. Here I'm sorry. Are the facts. If we, I, I think that uh, <laughs> the, the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback is, is a Hall of Famer 
And Period. so is Eli. They're all going in the same time. Eli Manning, since Eli Manning started playing quarterback, there's been 188 other quarterbacks come in the NFL. Number two, Eli Manning is probably the fourth or fifth most yards of any quarterback by the time he's all done. Uh, those are Hall of Fame numbers. The guy, the guy's played with separated shoulder. He's been character, Super Bowl, playoff wins. He's, he's not the prettiest guy, but when you put a team around him, you can win, you can win games with him, and there are a lot of guys you, can, you can't say that. Now, right. what well, Eli, anyway, I think a quarterback that can take a, a lesser team to the, to the, to the hill is, is – uh, but as you know, I'm well, just not an Eli fan. Uh, I'm sorry. We, we can agree to disagree on well, that, no. but uh, I, uh, we go ad at, at infinitum on that. No, it makes no difference. You know, I think he probably will make the Hall of Fame. But, I mean, we're going to have a quarterback that makes the Hall of Fame that has no touch on a little pass in the flat. Well, <laughs> never knew, never knew that, how to that's one. not his strong he, he has suit. no touch. I mean, throw a little 10-yard pass in the flat. It's at the guy's feet, <laughs> or it's 100 miles an hour. When? He has no touch, but he's going in the Hall of Fame. When? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I just, uh, I just, can't, I just can't go there. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad to see Cam Mann. And if I, one stat that really boggled my mind, and I'd have to go back and check it out, but anyway, I had a little parlay going Sunday night with the Steelers, four-teamer. They were my fourth team. They came through. Uh, Did you hit? At home. Did you hit? At honey? home. If I heard them correctly, at home, the Steelers, if they're up 14 to nothing, since 1992, their record is 192-0-2. Really? And they were up by 14, and they fell behind by quite a bit, and they came back and won the game. They were down by and I said to myself, well, here's the night I'm going to be really hexed because, I mean, here's the one time they've blown a 14-point lead. The Ravens didn't look all that bad, quite frankly. Uh, the Steelers on defense are nothing special. They can put points up on the board. Well, they lost their best player. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah no, on defense, no question. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, the, the Patriots are, 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 are not a lock. No, By any stretch of the imagination. I'll tell you I, think, I think the playoffs kind of wide open. I tell you what, Len, I, uh, the Pats put themselves in a terrible position with that loss to the Dolphins because oh, they have backs on the walls and they're going to throw home field advantage. And let me tell you what, Pats are going to be right there. I get it. But when they haven't had success in the playoffs, it's because they're going somewhere else. And that AFC championship. We're talking about Miami. Just two years back ago, a couple they're going to put when themselves they, in that. When they gave Miami again. the game at Miami and had to play on the road against Denver. Yep. Had they beaten Miami, they would have been home for all playoff games. They, what about deja that Deja vu all over again. Well, the. Uh, but anyway, but I, I still, if I'm if I'm the Pats opponents, I would never, I never want to play the Pats after a loss. Well, I, I yeah, would guess I mean, we're going to see a, a much sharper team late Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah, a big, big game. My two other teams, real quick, in the winter meetings, Atlanta, the, the new uh, GM, Anath Bolos there, uh, most recently from the Dodgers, but before that for the Toronto team. Uh, uh, he's not going to do much, because I don't, and I don't blame him, and I hope that he doesn't, because, I mean, don't give up any of our young pitching. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, we're not a contender. We're not going to be for three, four years yet, and don't give up any of the young pitching for a quick fix because even with a quick fix, we're not going anywhere next year. So uh, I'm glad about that. The Chicago Blackhawks, we've won three in a row against teams that are under 500. Before that, we were, we were just god-awful. And they have so many new players uh, on the team that you need a scorecard to keep track of them all. And uh, I, I watch them quite frequently still. And, uh, you know, Duncan Keith uh, – he hasn't got a goal all year. Uh, I mean, they're two defensemen, Seabrook and Keith. They're a little long in the tooth now. That's Been there a long time. Three Stanley Cup rings. How, how hungry can you be? I've gone over this before. Uh, Patrick Kane uh, can still get it done when he's motivated. Uh, and um, But they got a lot of new players. Uh, uh, the new kid there, DeBrincourt, is 19 years old. He's got three seasons over 50 goals in the Junior Hockey League. And... Uh, he he definitely is a good one, but makes a lot of mistakes, as you would expect of a 19-year-old. And they have trouble passing the puck, you know, from stick to stick. They, they throw a pass at somebody, and you'd think it's a hot potato. I mean, they, they just can't catch a pass, a lot of these guys. And 
So there's my Braves. There's my Blackhawks, the Giants. You know how I feel. Yep. But I'm very glad to see the Cam Man. Let on me. on the set <laughs> it's because it's good. never a guy had a name for television and a face yeah. for television. <laughs> it's the <laughs> cam man. It's good to so hear you. Go. Money. Have a good show. Thanks, good to hear from you. Bye we'll bye. Our number five two seven six four four nine. Keep those calls coming. We'd love to well, get a ton of calls tonight. I I um, I suppose I could go back to John Carlos. Yeah, you can go back to Stan if you want. So, had so, much so again, he had no, he had no, he had no interest apparently in any, in anybody else. He didn't want to play. He wanted to be on a good team. He had four teams. Yeah. He says, "Look, I've been playing for eight years. Never been in a playoff game. Never even been in a 500 is that, team." Is that how That's long exactly he's been right. in the majors? Eight years. Are you serious? Eight really? years. No, no playoffs. No, not even a 500 team. Wow, really? About seven different managers. Wow. He's, I don't blame the guy, and. Uh, but why and, weren't the Yankees getting more attention earlier? Because it looked like the Cards or Giants. Well, the Cards and the Giants up. made nice offers. Yeah. They're not. They're not going to be a World Series contender in the next two or three years. But yeah. the Marlins told Stanton yeah. said, "Look, if you don't take this deal with the Giants or the Cardinals, yeah. we're going to make you stay here with us." Huh. Right. And he said, "Sure." Go ahead. And he called <laughs> make, their bluff. Make my day. He called their bluff, and then, of course, they, uh, really? they traded him with the Yankees. And, sure. uh, but think of that lineup. Judge, Scary. Stanton, Bird, him, Sanchez. Hick, Hicks is well, a good Bird batted player. 190. I mean, yeah, he had a Bird had good seven home runs late, in the whole season. I know, but still. Let's <laughs> hey, guy missed the whole season. He did play good at the end. Yeah. I'll give you in that Hicks, Hicks yeah. looks like a pretty Hicks decent Hicks is player. a good player. Ellsbury is going to be their Sanchez. fourth. Did you mention Sanchez? I did. I'm I sorry. did mention Sanchez. And, uh, yeah, that's a fairly seat. scary line. Are you, are, you, are you very concerned about this? Well, Red Sox I'm fan? not. And, you know, I love talking sports with Dave. And I know he's a huge Yankees fan. But. Talks Yankees all year. But to me, you know, it's A-Rod and Teixeira days all over uh, again. No. All <laughs> over again. It's a mess waiting to happen. No, I guess probably done. the biggest rap on Stanton is tends to be fairly injury prone. He has been injury prone. And uh, what they're planning to do is they're going to rotate between DH, right field, and left field. They are stacked in huh. the outfield. What about Jacoby? They're going to give Jacoby. They're trying Jacobi to give Jacoby away. Is, well, he's playing center, right? Jacoby will have to fight it out with Hicks for center. Oh, okay. Hmm. And uh, the other thing I was listening. Well, he's probably there. He's got to be their worst contract right now. Oh, it's the worst deal they've ever made. What is he getting paid? Uh, Twenty hundred and fifty million dollars for seven years for a middle tier player now on that team, and uh, for a guy who might be a fourth outfielder. Right, exactly. And I was listening to Cashman, and Cashman said, "Look, we're going to put the best team on the field. We don't care what the salary is. We did it last year." Yeah. And of but course, you've, you've been telling us for we may come back to oh. this yet again. Thanks, yeah. caller. Go ahead. You're on the air. Fire away. Richard, who's that 49er fan sitting in the middle up Jeez, there? I think you know who that is, Mr. Fizz, Mr. Cam Wood. Well, I know who he is, but I thought that whole family was a 49er family. We are. We are, Jimmy. You're absolutely right. We can talk Niners if you want to talk Niners. but What can you talk about? There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> what do you mean? There's a lot of problems. Cameron, that Jimmy franchise Garoppolo has can... gone to hell in a handbasket. It's, you know what? It went from glory for a solid three years. I think we went to three NFC championships, well, the Super really Bowl. Just, and then they were gone. And, right? then, and then after Harbaugh left, all their vets that were solid, um, the Willises of the world, they all left. But you know what? That Shanahan kid's got a lot of promise. They got Jimmy Garoppolo. I think we're starting looks to get like, in this a little like bit. He got a good yeah, he'll be good. I tell you what, he hasn't thrown for many TDs yet over the past two games. But like I was saying to you, when's the last time you've seen a Niners quarterback distribute the ball to as many receivers um, as Garoppolo's done uh, the past two games? And, and yeah. that's the promise and the positive I'm taking away from it. Um. I oh, know. Looks well, like they're on the way. Looks the like way now. What happened to your Minnesota team last week? Ah, they didn't play well. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah. We're going to win that division, all right. Oh yeah. But uh, I don't know. They, they're a peculiar team. Jimmy, I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you have them in the NFC Championship? And be honest with me, because that's a tough one. Do I have what? Do you have them in the NFC Championship? Your your yes. Vikings. Yeah, your yes. Vikings. You do. Who are they playing? Uh, they'll probably. I, I'm I'm thinking they're going to oh the Eagles. 
They're gonna even without Wentz. You think Nick yeah. Foles is gonna? Wow, Foles okay. is pretty good. He's okay. Yeah, Foles isn't bad. He's yeah. a, he's the a, Eagles will be there. They are good outside the quarterback position. That is well, of course, that injury might kill them before it's all over. Well, that's that's, that's what injuries. I'm thinking. Fitzy, I got a question for you. If you're coaching Green Bay, do you play Rodgers or do you let him wait to the end, wait till next year? Well, it looks like they're kind of out of it. What they're what seven and three, eight and three? Yeah, um, no, they're seven and six. Yeah, seven, seven and six. Eight. I mean, they're out of it. I guess I'd have to start going to the young kid. Yeah. Well, if they, I don't know what their schedule is. I don't know if you've looked into it, but if they win out, they aren't guaranteed a spot. Oh, they aren't. No, no. I was going to say no. No, they aren't. Okay, I was going to say ten and six should be. I right don't think there. in the NFC though. The NFC, you really need. They've lost too many games to the teams ahead of them. Right, so they might lose in a tiebreaker. Right. But I think you will see a 10 and 16. But they lost to too many in their division. Yeah. Yeah. But if I had if I had Aaron Rodgers I and he had a separated shoulder and it's only been what 8 10 weeks, it's been premature, that's for sure. I'd say fellas get ready for next year. Because yeah. We I'm don't want to play golf right now. Because yeah. uh, remember the I'd Cowboys say, so. did that with yeah. uh with what's his name there, Romo, a couple years ago, and the first yeah. game back, he broke it again. Yeah, that's right. Now, Stanton, David, that's kind of put you guys over the hump, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah it has. And You can't pitch around either one of those two guys. And no, and we got oh, Sanchez. Judge, Judge does strike out a ton. Yeah, but he'll be seeing a lot more pitches now, better pitches. Don't don't, don't leave a hanger in that 4 5 3 4 spot. No. <laughs> no, yeah. Stanton doesn't strike out like Judge does. No. Stanton's and, not uh, terrible. You're going to have to get the, the uh, paint out and paint that wall when those boys They're get saying they're that. going to need to get 500 balls for batting practice because no, I know. <laughs> those guys are going to be hitting that's, them all over an, the place. That's an incredible move. I don't think the Red Sox are going to do a thing. They're going to, uh, it yeah, looks look like tonight somebody. they're going to pick up uh, J.D. J.D. Martinez. Martinez, supposedly. Martinez, probably. But Good I, hitter. What they should do if they really want to make a splash, and of course they won't, is get him and Hosmer and get rid of Hanley. Yeah. But, yeah, I know it. But your pitching's still kind of screwy Louie, too. Yeah, I think you need... Someone other than a CC Sabathia as your third guy. CC did pitch great towards CC the second half. CC was really season. good. I know, but how many more years is he going to get? We only need one more year out of him. I know, but I think they need a little bit better three spot. In They've my got opinion, a, they're uh, loaded. Their minor leagues are loaded. Well, there you go. Bring them up. They are. Who's going to grab the, the, the third baseman from Baltimore? Uh, I bet you nobody because we they were talk, I had to go to Burlington today for a dealer Stockus? meeting. Stockus? And no, uh, Machado. No, sorry. Machado. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. And they were talking about that all day. Baltimore wants two starting pitchers. I don't blame them. And Machado, the trouble with Machado, he's only good for one more year. You aren't giving Boston up. to play shortstop. You mean, kind, you mean contract wise? Yeah, he's got a contract coming due. Hmm. And he thinks he's going to get $400 million next year. Hmm. And I don't think he's got issues, that guy. He, uh, he's, he's been hurt. He's had two knee operations. Yeah. He's, he didn't play that well last year. He, he played better. No, he his, didn't have a very good year. No. And I'll tell you what, before I spend 300 million bucks on somebody, yeah. they better be absolutely bona fide, true right. blue ace. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, I, I, I agree, David. And I think what the Yankees have done, the Yankees have reduced the prices for both Machado and Harper because I don't think the Yankees are in for either of those guys because they're going to have guys that are almost as good that are two-year players. I just want to have Martinez. Martinez is a good hitter. He's a good player. Don Brasky actually got, got him the first time around with yeah. Detroit, I guess. But uh, I, yeah. just before I came tonight, I was watching the baseball MLB Network, and they said it's 90-10. The Red Sox are getting J.D. Martinez. All right, 90-10. Good. So, a, I, got, I really like him. So, Fitz, what do you think? Red Sox best hope wild card next year? No, no way they're getting ahead of the Yanks? I don't think they 
Well, I'd have to see who the Yankees are going to get. The Red Sox, if all their pitchers. They're starting five. I I don't know who they're going to get for a pitcher. The Red Sox, if their pitching was really good, if Porcello came back to life, if Price straightened up, that's a lot of bad. Hey, Wright Wright just got done beating up his wife, so uh, he won't see him for a while. Who did? That was a big letdown. Stephen Wright got arrested for domestic assault. (laughs) These guys are knuckleheads. Oh, they're stupid. Yeah, that's a good word. They're bad. Cam, how's your game? My golf game, Jimmy? Yeah. How good? What's your, you, you, you scratch, you were, I, uh, I used to Cam? be able to swing it a little bit back in my heyday. Now I probably play to like an eight or nine. Yeah. Not really where I want to be, but you know, hey, you know, I'm working He was good time. enough to beat me in a men's league. <laughs> yeah, that's about it, though. You took me, <laughs> what, a uh, six- Six to three or three and a half, five and a half, I think was. It was a dog fight. I know that. I, I, I wilted it. Your the game's end. prime right now. Though. Oh, I'm, I've really got that it. Short. I've got it going right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I know you are. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, uh, I, you know what I watched last night? I watched the uh, thing on a golf channel with Johnny Miller and Seve Barristeros in oh, yeah. 76 British Open. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Very good. Greatest round. That was good. That was really good. Well, gentlemen, we'll see what Stanton brings to the Yankees. It looks to me like it's going to be very, very tough. Yeah, that sounds like What do you think, Cam? Is that going to be tough? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I haven't really had a whole lot of insight. I know it's Dave's team. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, hey, listen, I'll be the fir- this is the first time I'm admitting this. I enjoyed watching the Yankees in postseason this year. They're a young, fresh team. Yeah, they weren't a... expected to be there. A little bit of an underdog. You don't really think that with the whole Yankees name. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, they're going back to trying to pad a lineup, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden we hate them again. So, yeah, the, um, the rivalry's back. Well, it'll be back up to but, full power this but year. But in respect to Dave, um, you know what, that team is going to be right there at the end. And, and like I said, I that so. middle part of the lineup, I mean – I don't want anything to do with hey, that. You know what? Opposing team. You know yeah, who's still team. really, really good? The Houston Astros. Oh, they'll be right oh, yeah. there. They are loaded, and they got Verlander for the whole season. Yeah. yeah. And they're looking. They're looking for a couple more pieces too. Yeah. Well, Houston Astros are the best baseball team in the major league. They leagues. are really good. Yes. Uh, my thing is, is who because Astros, in my opinion, were hands down the best offensive team this year. We, no question. No question. With the Yankees, Altuve's a wonder. Yeah, oh, that guy, he that is guy's great. Oh, he's Unreal. good. He, he's 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 like a Pedroia XL almost. Um, but uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm just curious to see with that addition with the Yankees, you know, how even they're going to be. I still almost think the Astros are going to be a little bit better of an offensive team number wise, just because of the start and the ending of the lineup. But they're loaded. It's going to be fun to watch those two offenses go at it. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. If they played in the uh, ALCS again, to be yeah, honest, I wouldn't surprise you. me either. You know, as long as pitching stays healthy and whatnot, obviously yeah. a big thing. But hang in there, guys. Thanks, yeah, Jimmy. Guys, thanks for calling. <laughs> yeah. Yep. See ya. We'll see ya. So are we finished with Mr. Stanton? Well, no. Uh, we're <laughs> almost done. We're almost <laughs> done. They did a thing on his. They're saying that in Yankee Stadium, he could get 75 home runs because a lot of the balls he hits that were outs. In Miami, yeah, would have been home runs. Yeah, in Yankee Stadium and in Baltimore and Toronto, huh. the band boxes that they play in. Yeah, uh, wow. Because he he's got really good right field power. <clears throat> I mean, he had 59 last year. Well, so when he's he hits not it that far, he's off. like Judge. When he hits right. it good, yeah. there's nobody that can hold him. Yeah. yeah, but his ones that aren't that good in Yankee Stadium on a nice warm. June night, yeah. when flying. a ball's going to right field, and you hit that pop up, and the next thing you know, it's over the fence. I think- talk, talk about a lot of buzz. I mean, just think if you're a, a Yankee fan, I mean, every time one of those guys comes up, and right, I tell you what's even intently. better, what's even better, they, tra- they traded Headley right, yesterday. Yeah. They're $35 million under the 195 really? luxury yeah, I saw tax. Like 167 or something? They're $35 million. So they've got room to pick up somebody. Really? And when that thing resets, they're going to have like an extra Who are they going after? Or what position? Well, uh, they're, they're going to use homegrown guys for third and second, it looks yeah. like. Oh. Interesting. Wow, we got another call. Record night. Another it must call. be because hey. of the cam man. Go ahead. It's the Thank debut. You. It's the cam man. Go ahead, caller. Thanks for calling. 
The cam man shows up on TV and everyone's calling in. Boy, I guess Boy, so. we're getting a lot of calls. This guy will be back, that's I've, for sure. I've been dreading this call all night, FYI, gentlemen. Hey, I'd like to give out a uh, shout-out to Leonard Tarrant before I get going. <laughs> hey, I'd like to know. i got a, got a quick history lesson tonight. Hey, I'd like to uh, put a shout-out. I think this caller here, have you straightened out that duck hook yet? <laughs> Hey, speaking of duck hicks, I know it's only December, but are you guys buying or selling uh, Tiger Woods' latest comeback bid? I'm not, you know. I, he, again, it was an 18-player field, his tourney and stuff, but he did look good. But no, I'm not. For people who, who throw out, boy, he just might win another major. Give, give me a break. But it looked like he might stay he around. Looked better. For, he looked better. He looked like he was swinging pretty I think pretty if he well. could hang around for the weekend, but, uh, uh, but I wouldn't put too much in in yeah. four days in the Bahamas after what he's been through. But, you know, Lips no would have, Lips would have been under so. par on that course. <laughs> Kev, you might have been under par if you were playing it without that power fade. Hey, wow, there's this. too much water on that course. Hey, you know, yeah. when you mentioned ducks, you just made me think of something. I saw, I don't know if anybody else is outside today, I saw a ton of geese, Canada geese, going south today right over St. Albans. I mean, a ton of geese. I get, in fact, they get off to a late start. Right. So. I guess they realize winter. Winter today was reality. But I saw a ton of geese heading south. Obviously, heading south. No, I think you, that's a good question, caller. I would say. Great question. Great I question. think that uh, let's see how ah, Tiger Woods looks in yeah. June or July after he's had to. Yeah. The problem that he's got. There's there's two or three real problems. Number one. Nighthawks. Nighthawks. Big criticism. He doesn't play enough. Hey, that's, Tiger. That's number you one. Got to play. He. Uh, these guys are practicing. They're hitting hundreds and hundreds of balls every day yeah. and every week. He's, he can't do that. He can't physically do that. Yeah. Number two, number two is the world has caught up to him. You're oh. Dustin Johnson, Rom, yeah, sure. uh, Ricky, Speed, Speed. Uh, Ricky Rory. Fowler, Thomas. Oh, yeah. Their oh. guys are out there, and they aren't oh. afraid of him. Yeah, I mean, they have no history I mean, of being you're afraid You're not of him. playing Billy May. Right. On Sunday for a PGA Championship, right. no. and uh, you know I love the layup question, Kevin. By the way, I, th I was expecting something a little bit more difficult from you, but um, you know I. Well, I'm not. I'm not quite finished. He's not finished. I mean, oh, you, he's you, you have you have Sergio or Tiger with more wins than 2018. What's that? No, oh, Ser Ser Sergio or Tiger more wins in 2018. Oh, Sergio, hundred percent. Um, you know, Kevin. Oh, Tiger's not. Tiger's not going to win any any big. He's not going to win. Ke you know, Kevin's. He a might huge... win the John Deere Classic right, in Moline. Well, he won't yeah, play in the John Deere, but right, he should. That's, that's the problem. Good. Right. He won't play. But there. Kevin. Kevin's a huge Tiger fan, and we have this discussion a lot. I know he's really excited to have Tiger back on the circuit. I am too. That's the, a golf. That's a golf world should be. I mean, talk you know, about the ratings guy's and stuff. seen enough negative and failure over the past three or four years. And I've given him a, a ton you, of grief. You kind of want him to Tiger do good, but you know, bottom of the line, like Dave said, that whole tournament. I mean, that that's like a men's league. To Kevin, those what guys. do you, Kevin? What do you think? You think he's capable of of really coming back to top tier golf? Oh uh, yeah, I kind of do. I think his uh, really? ring's a little more free now. He looks like the Tiger of. 2009. Of course, he's also 43 um, with like 10 back operations. He's putting it 30 that, yards past That Justin swing Tom. that he's been putting I on mean, the ball is impressive. I think, yeah. I think once he gets his short game under control, he's back. But, Kevin, like, right, honestly. You're asking, you're asking for a lot, Kevin. Kevin, honestly, you know, I, I thought, you know, 75 on Saturday, I actually I reached out to you on that. Yeah. I said, here we go again. Falls it up with a, 68, with a 68, which is great. But, but. Let's do that at the Masters. Let's, let's, see, at let's the Masters see how he does Sunday. at the Masters. Oh, yeah, you got to give me a real thing. With a U.S. Open where you got rough five inches thick. And uh, that. Or even but, before. That's just a me. resort course, that Bermuda course. Right, but even a full field turn. He's talking about maybe Torrey Pines, maybe his win will. Torrey He'll Pines is rough. They've turned that course into right. a bear. Just I, Give me a full field tourney on a, on a much I tougher think we'll, course. I think we'll see the issues before Augusta hits. Torrey, great example. Uh, getting down to Doral, um, places like that. Um, you're not going to have these wide open fairways, even though Tiger was very impressive with his fairways hit. Um, but, you know, Kevin, you know about the grind. I mean, does he still have the Saturday, Sunday grind? And uh, until I see that, I'm not sold. Yeah, the jury, jury, you up. jury's got to be out. Yeah. Well, but, you know what separated Tiger Woods from everybody else when he was at his peak? No, just the intimidation factor was huge. He could make putts. Right.
And yeah. ever since he had the, the golf club wrapped around his head, yeah. he hasn't yeah, been able to make putts. Cutting Although really the most good. thing I was impressed with, along with the tee game, was yeah. he, he was putting well. This Tiger time. made a lot of 10 to 20 footers, yeah. and that was a big difference because if he was oh, even yeah. average, yeah. he's not shooting under 73 out of four rounds. Yeah. Hey, I watched club a chip and then make a twenty. I watched the other day. Of course, the TV's been awful, but I watched the uh, before they had the Tigers tournament. They had uh, the 2008 U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. Oh, with oh yeah. Rocco when he won it on one one. He leg. made putt after yeah. putt after putt. No, you're right. Putting, on putting's 18, a thing. Oh, it. oh yeah. Putting's and I remember they show thing. Rocco in this the scoring room, and he's like, "I knew oh, it was going to happen." He's like, it's all over, even though they had 18 the and, next day to play. And uh, the one thing he hasn't been able to do is on Sunday, Kevin, make those putts. Since he's come back from all of his indiscretions, he hasn't been able to close the deal like he used to. Yeah, that's key. Yeah, you're right. In his prime, his putting was on. Uh, he had the mental, the yeah. mental toughness. That's what separates Spieth from but the Kevin, rest of these But, Kevin, it's a great guys. story. It'll be, I mean, he certainly kicked up interest in the golf world. I mean, and I'm glad. Hey, we'll, the, the we'll main all thing be for, following it. Hey, I got I yeah. got one more question though before I go to bed. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a big basketball fan, but uh, what what's your guys' take of this Levar Ball guy that's all over the news? Oh God! Oh, man. he's an idiot. God, and thank you, Celtics, he's, for he's not bananas. going anywhere near this guy. Did you, gentlemen, either of you? And I actually, I I had lunch with Kevin today, and, and this was one of the topics. Uh, <laughs> LeVar was playing in MSG, probably the biggest spotlight in basketball little... in the U.S. And LeVar hits a three or drives a lap. His father is on the court doing jumping jacks, basically. Yeah, he's the father turning would be... around, doing this to the, the crowd. father would be just and... driving me. To... I'm so glad the Celtics did. I don't yeah, think they, took, they, they took the right guy. Yeah, right. And uh, he's lucky, LeVar, that Trump got his kid's ass out really? of jail. Yep. Because... Right. Because uh, the Chinese, if it had been 10 years ago or if they didn't like Trump, they could have left him in there for, for a couple of months to cool off. And Trump, I'm no friend of Mr. Trump, that's for sure. But, but yeah, the father, you might have thought the father might have said, yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Right. You're right. Those guys would, who knows how and long he, they And he gets a free there. pass with UCLA on it. And next thing I know, yeah. they pull him out of when UCLA. The he that's, doing not, that's not the way to shoplifting go. Shoplifting anyways. He's probably got more under the table money than that. Uh, right. It's like people who go hiking on the Iran-Iraq border He's probably or looking for a drink. And slip gosh, into Iran know. by mistake. I mean, what are these guys doing? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Anyway. Clearly, UCLA. Kevin, you're watching him Celtics him right now. Are you paying any attention to Celtics? Kevin's not still there again. Last I knew, they were up five. Oh, is that right? Yeah. My man Jason Tatum coming off his. Love his, him. Maybe his. Love him too. Coming off a bad game, but his first kind of bad rookie game, but he's had a great year. Him now, and Jalen Brown are exciting to yeah, watch. No, it's I a think. Good, good they team. are good. I've good been team. watching them a little bit. Good team. I'll tell you what I think the Giants should do. Here's how you fix the Giants. It's in your New York football Giants? My New York football Giants. You keep Eli. You trade down, you trade from the two pick, and get maybe two or three bunch of bodies, bodies. decent bodies. I think and you, you go get, defensively, and you get offensive linemen. Okay, you could go, and then you sign a couple other guys, and and the difference between a bad team and a good team, four or five good guys, they're right back at it. So don't so you wouldn't so you wouldn't get another quarter. You wouldn't get one. I of the don't young think they QBs. need one yet. Well, with that, this is not the year to be drafting a quarterback. None of those guys impressed me. Leonard talked about the UCLA USC kid. So I may, don't well, think may, they have it. Give me a round that that uh, Mayfield's going to go. Not not a not a top round. <sighs> I, he's definitely going to get his opportunity to back someone up. That's for sure. I but think. But is that the big thing? Hasn't he had some off the field and antics? Oh, and yeah. a well, bunch. He sometimes he lets his passion. Get in his way, and and listen, I'm not Sears. I, I hope he's not another. He can't tell me he's another Johnny Manziel. I don't think he? he has the off the field issues, but his yeah. passion on the field yeah. was becoming a little bit of a. Well, that whole business about planting a flag at Texas and no, or is that Ohio State. Ohio State? He looped around half of the shoe, whipped the flag around, no, and he... staked it in the middle. But it was no. after Ohio State. Steamrolled them down in Norman and was singing their school song really. on center field. So just some pay payback. Hey, and and to give Mayfield a little credit, the guy was a walk on. Yes. Was he? Was he really? The guy was a walk on. Right. Is that right. 
He's the first walk-on to ever be, to a, be Heisman a Heisman Trophy. No, I didn't know that. And, wow. just, and another little thing, could you imagine if they get by Georgia, which I think they will, Clemson I think is clearly the better team over well, Bama. I'm, I'm an ACC guy. I'm not happy that Alabama got Could you in imagine there. if it's Oklahoma-Clemson when Mayfield was a sophomore, he uh, lost to Clemson in the semifinal really? the first year they did the college no, playoffs. No, that, and, and, right. and they got walked Clemson, out of the stadium. Clemson, Clemson killed them, right? Oh, yeah. It was like 38-17. Uh, well, hey, Clemson, good revenge game. Clemson's really Clemson good. Clemson does look right like a pretty good, pretty good team. They're good. They're and, good. Uh, I'm not happy from Clemson's point of view that Alabama didn't exactly sneak back in, but that's not a game I'm looking forward to. Alabama's not a, a I don't great think, team, but they're still a tough team. They are. I, uh, well, team. I didn't know. Of course, I've only come on to this college football the last few weeks yeah. because uh, it's a good time to do it. I so. didn't know that Ohio State lost to third by 31 points to, to Iowa. Iowa. That, that game, that game, right. Had because that not I, happened, they might be the number four team. Because yes. I think Ohio State... Ohio State right now, if the yeah. game, if they were playing today, Ohio State's probably the best team out there. Well, their, their quarterback, they their quarterback I, I strongly disagree I, I with disagree that. I disagree because their quarterback just doesn't oh, look anything. Oh, they killed that last game. They, well, uh, they, well, they, they struggle. I, no, I'm not sure. They end up getting the win. They did not kill Wisconsin. Wisconsin, another team, has mediocre wins. I do Is agree. Is the Big Ten with you? overrated? This year it is, but the problem with that is, is the committee loves to baby the Big Ten and SEC, and we see it every year. And you know, I I do agree with you, Dave. Ohio State, the second half of the season, despite that Iowa uh, loss, has looked very good. But getting blown out to Iowa and only mm-hmm. beating the Badgers by ten or whatever it was. It wasn't good enough as a two-loss team to yeah. sneak in. Well, there. the Badgers were uh, Badgers were undefeated. I know, but now they didn't had play Auburn anybody. won, had Auburn won, Auburn would have got in. Yes, oh, they right, were a two-loss sure. team. Right, they would have. Sure. There was sure. there was two games that were playing games. It was the Miami Clemson game, yeah. and it was the Auburn Georgia game. Oh yeah, those were they the were two. playing games. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, Auburn. I think it's like I was telling you, uh, hard to beat one of those teams. Twice in two or three weeks. Yeah, right. You're right. They it, caught him. They caught him the first time. The second time, the second time, Georgia really had a bee under their bonnet. But I mean, you, that, yeah, that may be a Steelers Pats issue. Of course, Steelers Pats big game Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Somebody, somebody obviously wins that game. Yeah. And they and they will hey, the, pretty likely face each other in the playoffs. And again, haven't the Patriots beat, beaten the Steelers like five, six the, times the, in a row? The Pats have done pretty well against the Steelers lately. But boy, the Steelers are pulling these games out of their you know, well, they're what? finding that's, that's ways not, to how win. How did they win that game? They've got three or four Baltimore. players who Steelers make explosive plays when you have to. They've got an excellent Steelers offensive are line. Pretty tough. Yeah. And but, uh, Leonard, uh, when uh, the Giants drafted Eli, the guy they would have taken next would have been Roethlisberger. Yeah. Is that, is that right? The reason the they draft. took when they – what happened with that? Wow. They had a little uh, special on that a few, a few weeks ago. I saw it huh. somewhere. San Diego had the first pick that year when they and they took Eli. Eli's family, Eli's agent, everybody told San Diego, "We are not going to play." Beforehand, obviously. For San Diego. So they had made this clear to they San Diego. They made it absolutely clear Eli is not going to San Diego. Huh. So they picked him anyway. So in the meantime, the Giants had I forget, was it the third pick? And, in a, and they started talking to the Chargers, and oh, they yeah. gave up what another one pick or another two pick. Oh yeah. And they gave them they they took Rivers because the Chargers wanted Rivers. The next pick would have been Roethlisberger, and the Giants would have had they not made the trade with the Chargers, they would have taken Roethlisberger. Quick question. Really? I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but quick question. Was Breeze still with San Diego yes, at when the this time. draft was Yes. Good? So that's really? why they, they didn't want to be any part of that, that whole. Well, the trouble with Breeze is Breeze had a, either a rotator cuff. Injury? Yeah, he had the injury. He had, and it's a bad one. It's yep. either a rotator cuff or uh, some elbow or Tommy John yep. or yep, yep. some, and that most guys don't recover from. Yes. And, huh. and, uh, and I remember New Orleans gambled on him. I remember. Sean. And it was a pretty, pretty good bet. Yeah. Hey, love some more calls. Now, uh, coming. who's going to be the, the uh, four, four, next nine. giant coach? 
I don't know. Who do you go after? Do you go with a good coordinator, whether it's defense or offense? Do you try to pull from a college team? I don't really see the Josh Giants. McDaniels. Are you hoping for Josh or not? Well, at all, what I've he's heard. He's not going to go, is he? Well, he may. He's hey, all these guys. If they get a chance to be a head coach, what do you think? What do, what does he? What do you think he makes for the Pats, Cam or Dave? Half a million. Half a mil. No I way would, he makes a mil or anything. Maybe he might. I would. I would have more than a mil. Not more. Than a mil. I was going to guess between just over a mil, but oh, I, so but, maybe around a mil. But you know those those coordinators that their salary is not really exposed, so I could be off. But I thought he'd be between one and one point five. Well, when or, and what about Giants? What, what would he get from the Giants if they get him for the coach? I think a head coach gets maybe three four million. Three four. Um, I. Well, that's a pretty good bump up, obviously. Well, uh, when Belichick was with the. Jets. Yeah. Parcells was paying him a million dollars a year to be the defensive coordinator. Really, okay. really. And uh, that was a while. But ago. that that was unusual huh. because okay. they Parcells. That was remember that whole Jets thing. He was Parcells. You remember well, when Belichick Parcells had accepted the job and then and then uh, what happened was the Belichick Parcells crying, Parcells crying was knew he was going to quit at the end of the year. Yeah. So he had set everything all up. He was going to go be the GM, and he was going to have part, uh, Belichick take over. In the meantime, the guy that owned the Jets died. And Sonny, Sonny Werblin, if I got that. The, the original owner, whoever it was. Huh. He was a nice guy. And I think he was, I was going to say he was a Johnson and Johnson, but I think that's the guys who own him now. Well, anyway... When uh, Parcells retired, Belichick had already been through a couple of goofy owners, especially with all the crap he had in Cleveland. Yeah, I remember. Huh. And he said no. And so he, he, I think, in the back of his mind, had talked to Kraft. And before the ink was dry on the thing with uh, on Parcells' retirement... Um. Belichick said, no, I resign as coach of the Jets. And the next day, he became head coach of the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happened, of course, is the Patriots ended up having to give the Jets a couple of draft picks um. for tampering with, uh, because Parcells finally said, hey, look, you know, we aren't going to let this thing drag out. You want to go to the Jets, so give us a couple of draft picks. And and that's what happened. But it all had to do with the ownership of the Jets. Oh, really? If the guy who owned the Jets really? hadn't, hadn't died, died wow. he would have stayed because he was a great owner. Huh. Wow. And I, I forgot I, I forgot that again. I, I, I do think uh, Daniels would be an absolute score for the Giants. Uh, I th- yeah, I, I think he could actually do something and get them right, you know, back on track. The thing is though, how many people on the Patriots organization, players, coaches, whatever you want, a lot of them are underpaid for their qualifications, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them don't care because they want to be I, a part I, of a winning organization. Nice to win a Super so Bowl every couple it, of years. It's going to need to be an absolute hefty package for to get him to make that. Well, win. I think uh, they, there's a lot of guys out there. They were talking about Nick Saban. Yeah. Well, Nick Saban Nick has a crazy. $60 million poison he'll never, pill. He'll never. Whoever, whoever gets Nick Saban has to pay $60 wow. million dollars to Alabama. Is that right? 60 mil? To, to get him. No. Uh, because Alabama's not stupid. No. They, or if you're Nick they're Saban. Paying, you know what they're paying Nick Saban? $11.1 million. You're Nick Saban, like Coach K. Why would, why would you ever want to even no, think about leaving what you have? Especially at 66, 67 years old. Yeah, Coach K is around 10, 10 mil. I think what you got to do is a guy like McDaniels, some young guy. Hey, I'll tell you who's a good coach. I've always liked him. He's like the coach for the Steelers. Where'd he come from? Out of nowhere. Like yeah. Tomlin. Uh, the, uh, uh, but you aren't going to coach... I don't care who you are. Vince Lombardi couldn't have coached this team this year. And the first thing they got to do is get rid of Beckham. I can't stand that guy. Can they get rid of him? Will they, will no, they, they won't. They'll keep him because he's really good. Yeah, but I, I but do But he's agree. an idiot. He is, he is, and you're absolutely right. But you've got him, Sterling Shepard, Marshall, and Ingram at tight end. I mean, healthy, that's 
going to be one of the best wide receiving passing cores out there. But like Dave says, you run into issues. A couple of those guys are head cases. Does that kind of tie the knot and I, cause issues? I think it does. I think I think the Giants haven't been right ever since they got Beckham. Um, and you look at that game they had with uh, Carolina when he was going nuts with Josh Norman. Yeah, I remember that. That game was stupid. It's easy yeah. to get in the guy's head, yeah. yeah. And then you look at last year, we talked about this last week, when uh, he pulled uh, uh, Tony Romo and headed off to Cabo St. Lucas with uh, yeah. Jessica Simpson. Oh, wow. During the playoff I game, yeah. Tony Romo did that it, between the playoff game and then yeah. they lost to the Giants that year. That was 07 Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. So what does Beckham do last year after the game? Him and uh, a couple of the boys go to Florida, and they're on some boat, and they had their picture taken with all these women, and, and they all, they're all hanging out. Yeah. And then they come back, and he laid an egg, and so did Shepard, too. They laid an egg against Green Bay. Mm. Yeah. So, but Shepard, I mean, he's only, he, what is he, a sophomore? He's a second-year player. But they... Uh, Wide receivers are just idiots right now. They're all, they're all such prima donnas. Well, they're not. Yeah, they just it, it's they all want the highlight. And if they could just all realize, okay, it doesn't matter how many targets I get. We've got guys all the field. Some some wideouts are just going to have to sacrifice going up with Norman and be okay with a ball being distributed in other areas. And, and again, that's that's what you run into. Well, with if you look him. at the Patriots, they get guys. That I don't think have as much of an ego. No, they don't. They get they get, they they get the Caucasian pretty, pretty slot team, receiver. Yeah. Team oriented guys. Yeah. Poor Gronk is back to the Pats. They're very poor showing against the. Oh, Gronk. they'll have Gronk yeah. back too. I forgot. That'll make a little difference. Poor Gronk's uh, Gronk's stupidity of the game before that came that that hurt with you know throw Gronk in that game and maybe that game is. Uh, Little better and stuff, although it's well, safe. their luck against Miami hasn't been very good. They were saying on no, TV they, they're yeah. what eight and nine last night, last or less, four out of five anyway. <laughs> I don't know beyond that, but no, they often, like I said, a couple of years ago, they blew the season by conceding that last. Oh, they uh, Miami's got their number, which which gave Denver home field advantage. Well, since you know, since the Pats have been a powerhouse. Going back what 10, 15 years, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, how many times? How many years? They have, you know, double-digit wins seasons yeah. countless times. But how many times do they lose a powder puff game to either a Dolphins, Bills, Jets? They always have that one loss where they look terrible yeah. against a divisional game. They have it every well, single the Jets, year. The, the Jets actually tend to play them pretty tough. The Jets, uh, and yeah. again, at Miami, the divisional they tend games to play are tough no matter what. The Bills, they pretty much dominate, although the opening, what, 34 nothing Bills after they traded – they're one of their great defensive back. Yeah. That game comes to mind. Yeah. Bills haven't been too much of an issue, but now the Dolphins have been an issue in Miami, and the Jets tend to play them pretty tough. Right. And they've got the Jets. Bills aren't a bad – Bills aren't a terrible team. Uh, they, for the first half of the season, I mean, I, they had a couple games where they looked inconsistent. Yeah. I thought they were a playoff team for six weeks they've in. Got, yeah, at Pittsburgh Saturday, at Pittsburgh Sunday, and then they finish at home against they're, the Bills They're a very Jets. athletic team, but I, I don't know. They just – they don't seem to get the big plays when they need uh, to, and uh, you know they're just they're very inconsistent. I saw a reference in the paper today. Pittsburgh controls its destiny for home field advantage throughout the playoffs. That's not right. If the Pats beat them Sunday then, um, and win the next, they finish with the same record. If they win out, they would get the head to head. Right. So that's not that's not correct. well. Uh, but, but if the Patriots, if Pittsburgh wins, they oh, do Pittsburgh it. Pittsburgh wins, they're in great shape. And if Patriots win, they're in great shape. So at least uh, I guess that's probably what this they game mean. is basically for. Big game. Uh, it's basically is this for a Sunday night home game? field. It's uh, for four fifteen, four twenty five. Oh, okay. late after, the only Sunday thing afternoon. the Pats would need, though, is if they can get the W, they need um, the Steelers Fine. to lose one more game because they only have two losses right now. The Steelers, right? Right. And one game ahead well, of the Pats. I guess yeah. Pats have three, so no, they both have three losses. They'd be, so. If the Pats win, they would both have three losses, yeah, giving right. the Pats a tiebreaker. With, you're right. So they, they both each have two games left, yep. and I think the I think the uh, 
Steelers might have the Browns in one of those games. I forget who they have. Yeah, oh, they, I'm sure. Sunday, last Sunday, Sunday, the Browns, Sunday's are, the Browns are getting closer. They've had some competitive They've games, some I guess. They've had tough games. The poor, they almost God, the beat the Packers. Browns. I, you know, hey, uh, and I know he's a head case. Again, we're getting back to the wide receivers being head case. But uh, Gordon coming back for him uh, had a great game. And between him, Coleman, uh, you got uh, Dookie Johnson in the backfield. Mm. Uh, you know, their quarterback's young, kid from Notre Dame or whatnot. But um, uh, they've been passing the ball well. And uh, I think they've got some offensive talent there. But Speaking of the brand, Jamie Collins, the former... Seemingly very good Patriots line, but I haven't heard his name. What has he has he been playing for the Browns? I mean, he's been playing. Has he anybody even heard his name? I, you know, I, 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 right, I, right I about now the Pats, you know, I haven't really paid Belichick attention. Belichick gets no grief on any of his moves. Uh, you know, Pats yeah. right about now could maybe use a Jamie Collins. The, uh, yeah, no, I totally hear. You. I have pretty really... Pats are getting pretty. They're getting knocked up, like everybody does. But the Pats are. Geez, it I seems mean, like someone's wise. banged up every other week. Hey, uh, at least for that team. To change direction, yeah. you know what I saw the other day uh, going down Main Street in Burlington across from the, uh, Dave, the Davis Center? A sandwich sign on the median said, UVM hockey tickets available. Oh, is that, is that yeah. right? Just driving, you saw that. They, huh? uh, they've got, now think about it, five, ten years ago, it was about a ten-year waiting list. Oh, yeah. It was, Glad it was you brought a, this such up. such a tough ticket. Do you, go, are you, do you go to hockey games? Um, I do. I go to a lot. Um, my, my grandfather was a season ticket holder oh. forever. He passed that along to my uncle, huh. um, who now has him. My uncle's busy, um, you know, going away. He's got a boy who plays out of state so or whatever. You go so go to a fair amount of games? I have the opportunity, huh. but like Dave said, I've passed on him this oh. year because, you know what, they are absolutely terrible. Uh, not a good team. I thought they were going to be a top four uh, contender because they had uh, the goaltender back, Lekis or yeah. Lekis, what, whatever yeah. you, you uh, however you want to pronounce his yeah. name. Uh, they had a couple great recruits coming in, and uh, that kid's just getting been peppered, so they're struggling with their goaltending. They can't score, and I mean, who who wants to go to a two-two game against Brown? Yeah. They're, uh, you yeah, know what? Really even when too. they win, the since Sten's been there. It's very boring hockey. Very. Although that Boston College game on Friday night where they lost 4-3. Uh, it was a better game. Good. It was a great were you, game. Were you, were you there? I was there. Oh, yeah. uh, Boston College, obviously, clearly the better team. Huh. Uh, UVM, what they did that night, which they haven't done all year, is they capitalized on their scoring opportunities. They huh. didn't have a lot of them. They didn't match them with BC, but they capitalized. They found a way to put the puck in the net. Uh, it was a great game I saw, but you know, other than that, they've struggled to win. Uh, Snedden, listen, you know, he's done a lot of great things. Brought him to a Frozen Four in '08, but if you know, he's got them to the middle pack of Hockey East. Mm. But if you want to get to that next level, I don't think he's the answer. Of course, Nighthawk, Nighthawk would say, and Nighthawk might well agree. He would say, the gut, and, and I, I kind of I like the place. It's kind of a cool place, but. Just facility-wise, you're certainly probably pretty much on the bottom in hockey east. That probably doesn't help them either, does yeah, it? Yeah, no, I can't. I can't help that. You know? Yeah, uh, they seem to be at best uh, at best a middle of the pack team, and they're not and they're not that. Hey, uh, they've got the probably the worst basketball gym of any D1 team in the country, yeah. and that doesn't that hasn't hurt them from being a good basketball team. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. that that team. Is the team of that, of that institute right now? Yeah, oh, they're Haynes good. Did return and to action Monday. He played Monday. Uh, yep. Um, he missed the game against Northeastern, and they lost. I think they're a better Tough team game. than Northeastern. Yeah, um, but you know, ju- just recapping that team quickly. You know, they lost by three or four points to Kentucky. Yeah. Um, you know, they lost. Had, to, had a chance to tie right, it a couple times at the end of the game. They lost a dogfight to Bucknell, who's been in the tournament yeah. before. Uh, they shot it great. They beat the Duke. I think they knocked the Dukies out a few years yep, ago. Yep, they, they did. You're absolutely right. Uh, they shot it great against a Marquette team. I think they put 80 up against Marquette. Yeah. Um, Haynes uh, had a concussion halfway through that game. Huh. They struggled against Northeastern, but then come back Monday night, Good put up 80 against Saints. Siena. And um, I'm just going to say it now since I have the opportunity. <laughs> I got the Cats at, as a 12 or 13. You really? And I no. think they're going to end up beating like a Cincinnati or a Temple. Someone they, played, they played Purdue very, very tough last year. And I think this is the year we see, uh, we see a Syracuse game yeah. all over. Well, they, uh, the other thing is, too, don't forget, 
how many road games in a row did they yeah, have? Yeah, they can't get right. It's well, just so hard. They, they the had problem. about eight it's or just nine. Just a second home game yeah. Monday night. That's the problem Nobody will of play. They being can't get a good mid-major yeah. team. Yeah. You spend the first quarter yeah. on the road to try to prove yourself, yeah. and, and you know that that's huge. So yeah. to be seven and four, that's tough. I would have liked to see them beat Northeastern or squeak out against Bucknell, but they yeah. won that holiday tournament against yeah. another group of good mid-major teams. Yeah. Uh, played Marquette close, played Kentucky close. Yeah. Uh, they were sitting uh, fourth in the country RPI for the longest time. Um, and um, I, I just, I, I'm excited to see them down the road. And, uh, you know, quickly, uh, Albany played a great game against a Methodist team yeah. who's been in the Final Four before, yeah. actually been in a championship. Yeah. So a lot of good things coming well, out of the, that conference. Well, the basketball seems to be the pool of good teams is deeper now. Oh, yeah. Even though even though the deck is stacked against your UVMs and and teams like that, because the big guys, the big guys want to make sure they get in. Right. The the whole NCAA is all, is, it's not an even playing field. Yeah. UVM doesn't get a fair shot. Oh sure, the big conferences. Ob- they obviously. load up. It's just like last year when they had right. to play Purdue. They shouldn't have been. Uh, what were they? A uh, fifteen or? They played in a. They, they, they played in a four. They played in a four thirteen game, which you're absolutely 13. right. They should have been lower than that, uh, or higher, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. They get they and and when no, they're no all respect. done, when they're all done, they want they want Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, yeah. UCLA. That's what they want, and uh, the tournament is set up so that those guys have an easy chance and, and well, he, there's just so many more of those guys and yeah, Dave, yeah and dave's right they, they got a bad share last year and i know right, so you think they should have added the, well they, they got the money share. it's the money richard when, um, when for every every game you win yeah. i forget how much you go from half a million dollars Your to like a million and a, and a half a lot of money so for that kind of money they they don't want uvm they don't want cinderella that's the biggest farce I've had that discussion with a couple other guys at lunch, how the NCAA tournament is also, they love Cinderella. They don't want Cinderella. <laughs> no, they do they everything the they can to keep Cinderella in the shed, and they lock the door and they bunk over the head with yeah. a shovel. Yeah, Dave, Dave's absolutely spot on with that. And even though we're talking positioning of just one seed, the difference between a 5-12 and a 4-13 is absolutely huge yeah. in that tournament because what you end up getting in the 12 spot is you get a hot mid-major team that's played some really good Power 5 conference teams early in the season, mm. probably played them pretty close. Yeah. And then the five, you get someone out of, like, uh, the AAC, the American Athletic Conference, uh, the Yukons. Uh, the Mem- uh, maybe Tula- the, the eighth team out of the ACC. Yeah, maybe right. one of them. You, you, get, you, you, get you a- don't get... Purdue was a powerhouse right. team. Right, they're one of the best teams in the Big Ten. Yeah. The five, you get a team out of the big five conferences that have been mediocre, er, inconsistent yeah. all year, and they get against a team like the Catamounts yeah. who can shoot the rock from behind the perimeter, and then all of a sudden they're behind the eight ball. Yeah. And, uh, but I think they will get that 12 seed this well, year. Well, the one thing Vermont doesn't have that the big boys have is the big boys. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Those 6'11", 250-pound They don't have the power, power forwards. forwards. You're absolutely right. That, that can, and they don't have just one of them. We may have what? We got one guy that's 6'8". No, I mean, Lamb's their guy down yeah. low, but even so, he's maybe 6'3", 6'4". He's just athletic. That's And, like, you know, and so yeah. when you're... No, no serious height. When, and no. you, when they play your Purdue's and uh, uh, Michigan State's, they've got four guys down there, and they rotate them in, and they just, they can foul, they can beat you up. Because you know what you can't do? You can't fix... You can't fix being you can't, short. You can't teach height. Height makes such a difference. Yeah. You're in, and the other thing is, though, but one of the reasons why they were so successful against a Kentucky, which is all about the power forward, is because that's fine. You, you don't want to let us down low against the big guys. Mm-hmm. That team, and I saw it firsthand, I've watched three or four games online, that team can shoot the rock between about three or four guys. Mm-hmm. They put up 80 points against a Marquette team. It was like a 91-81 game. Yeah. And they did it all by shooting from the perimeter. Mm-hmm. And that team is scary from deep. Yeah, they and, can shoot the And three. if they get off hot, yeah. 
and another team gets in foul trouble, I'm telling you, they can make an upset this year in the oh, tournament. Look at B- I, BC. And I look for them to do it. BC shot, what, 57% from three-point They've been great. Yeah, they've been great this year. They had an unreal game. They had a big injury, though, didn't they? Did, did BC have I, One of their really? top guys, I don't know his name, but that, one of their – In that game? I don't know which game it was, but one of their uh, one of their guys, as far as points per game, went down. But they, they've still Robinson been okay Roman. since. Yeah, no, it sounds like they played out of their minds that yeah. game. Now we got all the BFA teams are all just about ready to start their winter season. Right, yeah, is that right? Yeah, I think do the uh, girls play tonight? Girls hockey? Yeah, I'm not sure what their schedule is. I know the. Uh, so seasons are just just starting. Just starting. I think we're playing with scrimmages, exhibitions. Yeah. We're doing that. Yep. And so the, you uh, pay a lot of attention to um, uh, Bob White's and the Cubs? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I played in high school myself. And, of um, course, broadcasted for a number of years on broadcast, the radio station. Broadcast. My dad right? got me into that. Um, I started doing uh, color with him. Uh, he got in a word edgewise with that guy. <laughs> that, well, uh, he kind of took over <laughs> Timmy Streeter's possession, and I slid into his we did that, and then Kevin, who actually called earlier, yeah. uh, my dad kind of stepped away. I took over play-by-play. Huh. Kevin slid into color, and we did that for about three to five years. Then huh. he got a coaching position, and I guess they I – I don't know if it was a funding issue or uh, huh. no one to really cover, but the, the radio kind of died at that point. Radio so. literally, literally died. So do, yeah. you miss, do you miss that? You sorry? I miss it a lot. Now, do, uh, now we do the games. Who does the uh, – but those are all old games. They, we never put the games on live. I don't. I don't. Th- I don't. They're think, not. I don't think so. I, don't I think, think so. what they do is is um, they the the players or the managers will will film them, oh, and right? then when they get towards the end of the season, they'll yeah. get someone to come in and do like a play by play and a oh, color, right? but they'll show it after the game. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, will we be able to uh, show a game like that live? Because that would be really cool. If we could broadcast from Channel 15. I'll tell you what, I could do play-by-play. Oh, and I you, could be the color and you guy. you could do like, color, fine. Yeah. Hey, talk, talk, to the, talk to Elizabeth and stuff. Sounds like we that had the personnel. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Because that would be, uh, that would be pretty I mean, cool. I'll mention it. I mean, I'll certainly mention yeah. that to her. So you'd be up for... Oh, I, would, lo- I would love to get into that. And I, actually, ever since, ever since I've been a young guy, I've, I, I, I love doing this stuff. Love yeah. talking about sports. That's the a, whole communication. Didn't do yeah. any of it, but... You know, yeah. uh, I'm definitely uh, love. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll run that by Elizabeth. Yeah. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe the playoff games yeah. or right. something. Yeah. Right. Maybe get an Essex game or yeah, something. Because you don't want to. Uh, of course, not that. Uh, but you know, like I remember when uh, when my folks were still living, uh, they didn't want to go to the games, but they used to listen to them on the radio right. when my kids were playing. Yeah. So, and I think there's. There's probably people out there who wouldn't mind watching them live. Yeah, I'm sure I've, you're right about I've that. I've heard a lot of feedback about people wishing that, you know, we got it back on the radio some, and whatnot. Don't they show some uh, on the computers, too? Yes. Um, what High is school it? games. Yeah, NSN uh, does something, but they have their own crew for that. I think for hockey, they're not as involved as they are with basketball and football, um, but they do do some games mm. um, and whatnot, you know. But I mean, uh, uh, and you can get sponsors for that, though I... I don't know. We don't of take course, advertising. That's yeah. yeah, that's the thing with, with, with public access. You can't do kind of official ads and stuff. I'm not the best person yeah. to be. I think you can mention your company and stuff like, like but of course, on, uh, you know, we're funded. CPR and the, uh, the Comcast. Is I'm sure the I Comcast. Get, we get a little bit out of everybody's, oh, sure. out of everybody's cable bill. Is that's that what pays for people us? people watching us now. That's why they're watching us now. Sure. Comcast, yep. A few bucks out of your bill or whatever goes to support folks like uh, these guys. Anyway, so big. tell me about Big 12. Where did the Big 12 come from in your life, Cam? Um, the Big 12 came from my father. He, was yeah. a, he, was a, he is a Sooners fan. Really? Uh, where did that come from? Well, that's to be determined. Uh, apparently, he's always been an Oklahoma fan. I'm probably going to get harassed for saying this, <laughs> but my dad seems to be sometimes a... Fair weather fan in a my fair, opinion. Oh, I would. Fair weather fan? A bandwagon fan. I mean, oh. He's the only person I know who will say, hey, I'm a Canadians fan. The Canadians go out and then he's rooting for the Bruins. Yeah. <laughs> because he lives in New England. Um, but my dad's a big Oklahoma fan and I got it from him. Huh. And um, ever since I've started getting involved with sports and really understand and comprehending, you know, the, the different aspects that yeah. go with the game other than just playing in the backyard. 
I've been watching them. Um, I love the team, the Sooners. You got to love yeah. that. Such I've a, been such to. Uh, I've been on campus. Oh, have you? Have, have you really? My sister-in-law. We're talking. We're talking Norman, right? Yes, Norman, my sister-in-law used to live in Norman. Oh, is that right? Only a couple blocks really? from the uh, from the college. Wow. So one day I huh. took a ride and I went. Oh yeah. They they're they've got anything those places. They have football stuff. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, I don't know if either of you – I know, Dave, you said you're just kind of getting into it now that we're getting into bowl season. But um, not to be biased at all, but, it, you know, for example, my roommate now it doesn't watch college football at all. all right. He'll sit down and watch the Oklahoma game with yeah. me because that offense is that yeah. much fun to watch. Yeah. You're, you're not – not watching a Florida Tennessee game where it's thirteen to seven and there's turnovers all the time. You well, know, the uh, college football, yeah. I think this year, has probably taken a lot of viewers yeah. from NFL football. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, you're probably right about that because yeah. uh, the NFL People with that whole business with the, NFL with the uh, standing with the uh, standing for this uh, yeah, national that anthem. Could, that could be. Now could be. today, uh, just to show you another little tidbit, how I've been picking up. <laughs> a little little bits of uh, information <laughs> to make this show even more enjoyable. Uh, they, uh, of course, Congress passed this uh, new tax bill today. Yeah. While one of the provisions, well, in I guess it, the two, how did, did they pass? They, it or did they, they got uh, together. They've got a they've got a compromise. Come for a vote, but it sounds like they have the deal. They they got it figured out. Yeah. While one of the provisions in this new uh, tax bill is that universities and public entities that pay a salary of over a million dollars a year huh. can't deduct it anymore. Oh, really? So huh. all of these big salaries, your Nick Sabins and yep. all those guys, okay. the yeah. universities are going to have to pay tax now on, huh. on anything over a million dollars. Oh, really? Wow. And, uh, well, again, for this guy, for Alabama and Duke, you know, I suspect they'll probably... You know, live, live with this somehow, but well, the but, uh, the article I read. But said some schools, that, yeah, that might be a bit of a factor. Well, the big schools will just hit up their sort donors, donors like they do anyway. But one of the well, things. I'm an official, by the way, Iron Duke. That's the Duke Booster Club. Proud to report that I'm the bottom. I think I get a yearbook because of the hundred dollars a year yeah. that the Iron hey. Dudes. So I'm at the very bottom. You know, I have to, I'd have to give like a, probably a hundred grand a year to have a chance at maybe one basketball game. But oh, yeah. really? I throw them 100 bucks and I get a yearbook or two. Nice. Sorry. The, um, <laughs> the other thing that they're talking about, which, of course, is they, uh, there was some reasoning for this, is that, of course, there's a lot of consternation about these colleges paying, being minor leagues for these professional teams. And they were saying that what may happen is that some of these non-revenue generating sports may have to go by the wayside huh. to oh, yeah. pay for these big college coaches contracts and uh, huh. but what which they really might, should which do might be a title title nine issue well you you've got that but although of course evm see you know they managed to get rid of football and more recently baseball and yep. softball without I the guess, uh I mean, hey let's face it we talk about this all the time the uh your football and basketball sure. pay Sure. For girls' soccer and badminton and volleyball and all the things that nobody ever watches, sure. that they have to give scholarships for. Yeah. Sure. Because uh, if I were the boss, if I were the king, I think I'd get rid of Title IX. Yeah. And let the chips fall where they may. We've had we've had women's sports now for 40 years. I don't think for a lot of schools it would change much. I think for a lot of your Division Three, I think, but. Of course, I think that the uh, NCAA is just a scam anyway. And that well, we know how, how much you love the NCAA. I, uh, I think that... Uh, well, it's a business. You know, the bottom it, line it's is got it's got nothing to do with students. No. Zero. Yeah. Zero. And when they uh, pretend to talk about the student-athlete, it's all... I hate seeing those commercials. Oh, you so can funny. see right through them. Right. Now, the guy that's playing volleyball, he might be a student-athlete. Right. Yeah. But... One minute? One, wow. one minute. So anyway, I'll shut up and I'll let 
Camp, how about the last word? Anything you want no, to No, just I uh, really appreciate please? being here. I had a lot of Glad fun. Glad to have you, buddy. Uh, no, I really Great appreciate have it. You. Thanks. And, be, we'll uh, get you back. That's absolutely. And, and uh, thanks to Dave for recruiting you. I well, I told him. I told Richard. I said, I know who we can get. <laughs> Great. Great I, I choice, enjoyed it, man. and I'd be happy to do it again. And uh, You'll be thanks back. to all the callers. And, and yeah, the we have a lot of callers tonight. Yeah. Calls tonight. Thank you, guys. Anyway. Yeah. And Nighthawk, I, can, I think I can promise you fine folks, the Nighthawk will return next week. Great. Thanks a lot for watching. So, Ian, thanks for doing all the hard work. You're great. And, uh, again, we'll sign off. That's it for the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. We'll see you next week for our last show before Christmas. See ya. Thanks for watching. Sayonara.